So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We still have a few people in the waiting room that are trying to connect, but we will go ahead and start with the introductions to this session. Global Schools is very excited to be hosting Compass Education as part of a professional development workshop. Um, we are uh, very, very happy to um, have all of you on joining us. And I'm going to go ahead and give an introduction to the amazing speakers and facilitators we have um, here today for our 90 minute um, session. The session is going to be um, interactive. Um, they will give you instruction throughout the session and we really hope that you um, engage with us so you can get as much out of this session as possible. Um, please write in the chat uh, where you're from. Uh, we would love to see where you're dialing in from and to get a sense of the wonderful people in this room here. So first I will introduce uh, Nicole. She will be one of your facilitators today. Uh, Nicole is the executive director of Compass Education. It's a global nonprofit supporting education for sustainability, mainly through systems thinking practices, and they will give you um, an intro to Compass Education as well. So, so she supported the team at the American School of Puerto Vallarta to develop their sustainability and service outreach initiatives. And the school was awarded um, a series of awards due to her work. Um, and she's also a consultant and she is passionate about helping schools and businesses integrate sustainability um, into their practices. She um, has also been the director um, in worked in nonprofit leadership and sustainability at the nonprofit organization Entre Amigos which has been recognized by the United Nations as a finalist for the Global Equator Initiative. Um, so we're really excited to have Nicole here. Her bio is extremely extensive um, with a lot of different awards and, and accolades. Um, then we also have Jajantali. So she'll be your second facilitator today. Um, so she takes pride in designing, coordinating, and facilitating uh, transformational learning in collaboration, mainly with Compass Education's large network of educators. So she consults as a learning designer and facilitator for organizations striving for positive systems change on topics such as bystander intervention, violence prevention, leadership, and social enterprise. Um, she has a BA in Peace and Justice Studies from Tufts University and an um, MED in Education Policy Research Administration from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. So we're also very excited to have her on as a facilitator today. So I will turn it over to Nicole to give you an introduction to this session uh, specifically and more into the work of Compass Education. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, great to see you. We're really excited to, to present today and we're especially excited to give you some real tools, right? So our sincere hope is that you can walk out of this workshop and walk into your classroom or your context and be able to have sort of deeper conversations about sustainability. I'm going to share my screen and sort of step right into it and uh, look forward to, to jumping in with everybody here. So Compass Education is a global network of educators for a sustainable world. And, uh, we really truly believe that educators are systems change makers and that if we're going to have the outcomes of a sustainable world, it's our educators that need to be prepared and ready to, um, to do that work in our communities. In order to sort of move forward in that, we provide workshops and courses, and we have an entire community of practice who are using these tools, some of which we're gonna share with you today. Um, in, in, in PK, in, in K-12 education, so from early childhood um, through, through high school or secondary education and beyond. And we're really proud of that, the way that we can do that with every age group. Now, um, when I talk about that, or I talk about you know workshops and things that we're doing, um, we're using something called the Compass Toolkit. And the toolkit, supports you to integrate sustainability into what you're already doing, right? So we're not gonna ask you to do sustainability as something else. We're gonna 
show you ways that you can do what you do and what you have to accomplish in school every day, no matter what country you live in, what context you have. Um, but you can bring in sustainability into what you're doing. And, and we've been doing the work for a long time. So our educators have uh, been using these tools for about 12 years. It's they're often in some of the, the largest and, 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 and most influential international schools, but that's mostly because they're already looking for these kinds of things, right? So these tools really support outcomes of global citizenship. And if you have an IB school, if you're trying to do service learning or project-based learning or change-making or innovation, entrepreneurship, all those kinds of things, um, this is gonna help you and you're gonna really be able to see in what way does it work for me and how do I want to use it? And, um, and when I say global, we're about 3,000 educators who have done some of our formal trainings. We're in about 800 schools in 96 countries. And we're super excited that you're here with us as well and that we're, we're getting to connect with you. Um, I want to take a minute to let each of us as facilitators, we have some, some really fun, good people on this call with us, introduce themselves in, um, in the way that they'd like to, to present themselves to you. So Gitanjali, please go ahead and, and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Such a pleasure to be here and connect with you. Um, as you've heard, my name is Gitanjali, and I come from a high school social studies background. So I discovered Compass Education while I was working with students, teaching geography and history, working on service learning and community engagement work. And I really wanted tools to help my students think about our context. I was in an international school and I went to a mix of public and international schools growing up. I wanted to figure out how can we think about context and not one size fits all problem solutions plus develop some really key skills my students needed as social studies students in high school to, to do well and think critically. So I'm excited to share with you today and I'm gonna pass it over to Karen who is also joining us on the call today. Uh, thank you, Gitanjali. Uh, yes, I'm here to support Gitanjali and Nicole during this uh, training. I am a early childhood educator and I've been really excited to see how uh, systems thinking and uh, sustainability can be promoted and facilitated uh, in the early years. Start creating a strong foundation from which older grades can build from. And just knowing that young learners are so capable of deep thinking, um, deep critical thinking. Um, so that's been exciting for me. And I also support my school in uh, establishing systems thinking from pre-K all the way to grade 12. And I'm currently supporting a sixth grade uh, uh, service, service learning group at my school. So um, I come from with here with different perspectives on it, but definitely I'm grounded in early years. Yeah. And it's exciting, right? Because people often think, well, you can't do this with younger kids, but you can and, and we should, right? That's, that's the beauty. Um, all right, so today, today we're gonna give you two tools. We're gonna um, dive deep on one and we're gonna share another one that builds off of that that you're gonna be able to use on your own time when you want to. Um, we're gonna really support you to get some hands-on practice and an understanding a bit of why systems thinking is actually a critical part of a sustainability conversation. And, uh, and then after this, we'll basically send you an email with a bunch of links to resources and things that you can use in order to sort of dive deeper if this work is um, feeling interesting to you. And, and so the first thing to do is to sort of dive into to all of us who are here on this call and the sort of beauty of being all together. And I know that uh, if you're on this call, I am, 99% sure that you're familiar with the, the United Nations SDGs. And we all probably have thought about them and, and that sort of thing. So we're gonna go ahead and, and just move into breakout rooms for a kind of quick introduction, your name and where you're from and what's that SDG that most moves you, you most use, you most like, you're most curious about. Um, choose one 
and and speak sort of briefly with your with your colleagues on the call to sort of introduce yourself. We're going to go ahead and move into breakout rooms right now. If you're having any issues with breakout rooms, please let me know and I'll try to put you into a different room. Hi all, if you're just joining the call and I've just let you into the call, we are doing a quick breakout room activity. So we will try to assign you to that and just um, bear with us while we assign you. If you see the breakout room, please um, accept to go to the breakout room. Thank you. And if anyone in this main room needs help getting assigned to a breakout room, just please raise your hand or unmute yourself and, and let us know. Mm -hmm. I've just joined. My name is Aubrey Kaswa from Zambia. Hi, Hi it's everyone. great to see you. It's great to see you. Um, we're doing breakout rooms just to do a quick introduction. I think we only have one minute left. Did you actually can you let us know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. About one minute left. So okay. Aubrey, you did get invited to a room. You can pop in if you'd like, but we're also happy to just have you here as people start to pop back in. Your choice. Sorry, I didn't get to. So we're going to be bringing everyone back in in one minute, but you can feel free to introduce yourself to us here. So mm -hmm. what type of teacher you are? You said you're from Zambia. Mm -hmm. If you're an educator. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm currently a science educator at Meboshaw Girls Secondary School, offering biology and integrated science. Wonderful. Nice to meet you. Nice Thank to meet you, Robert. <laughs> So it looks like we have everyone coming back to the main room. So we'll give it a few seconds to have everyone come back. I'll turn it back over, over to you then. Great. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. We're still waiting on just a few more people to rejoin the main room. 
And Nicole, whenever you're ready, we can dive back in after 15 seconds. Let's give it just a few more seconds for people to pop in. And just a quick reminder, after the breakout rooms to put the microphones back on mute would be wonderful so we can jump into the next part of the session. Okay. Gitanjali, are we ready to go? Thumbs up? Go for it. Okay. Great. So, you know, we're working on these really big challenges in the world. The, the, the SDGs present to us sort of the complexity and the depth of those challenges. And we know, and we know both by looking at the SDGs and also just looking at, you know, what happens in the news, what's happening in our context. And, um, and we're lots of good people who are working towards that. So I want you to take a minute and take a look at this uh, cartoon. And do me a favor and in the chat, if you can, just sort of take a look at this cartoon and what do you think is happening here? So can I share what you think is happening here? If you're really inspired, you feel free to unmute, but go ahead and you know, what do you think is, is happening here? And Karen, if you can help me to, to read out a little from the chat what people are, are typing. <laughs> uh, Maria says, the lady is not saved. <laughs> oh, mothers are always taking risk. Uh, instant action doesn't solve or save. Going from a problem and entering a second one, okay. They tried to offer a solution, but the impact was much worse. Again, uh, hopping from one trouble to another, an extreme solution. Okay, Prakriti says boomerang effect. What goes around comes around. Sarah says, sometimes you just need to take a jump. Raymond, try to provide a solution which brings back to the problem again. Right. <laughs> um, Sarita, men are waiting for solution and the lady took a jump. <laughs> All right. So, you know, I, I think the question that I have for you and was anybody here bad and was it were there bad intentions here no right like these people these gentlemen thought they were saving her they're they're there they're trying to do the right thing they thought they were saving her and then what happens you know we see this and we see this all the time in our good intentioned work towards the sdgs and our good intentioned work in the world but the world is more complicated than that. And lots of different kinds of things are happening. And very often within the, the thrust of the good intentions, there are unintended consequences if we aren't able to see the bigger picture. And this is a space that we're gonna to start to work in today is develop our capacity to be looking deeper at the bigger picture as we're thinking about sustainability. And you know, we have a tendency though to go, you know, very linear thinking. And there's, it's not our fault. This is what we did in school for our entire lives. All of us have learned that the big thing to do is if there's a problem, you come up with a solution. And we do this to kids all the time too, right? Pick an SDG, now come up with a solution. But we aren't necessarily giving them skills to really think deeper, understand the complexity and come up with a solution that's of critical value and contribution. And so these are the kinds of skills we wanna build in our kids and in ourselves as we begin to think and recognize what's happening in the world. And you know, of course the fav famous Albert Einstein quote, right? We just can't continue. We've been trying to solve plastic. We've been trying to solve most of the SDGs for 50 years. Right? We need new thinking to do this kind of work. And um, we're going to go ahead and keep going here um, because we want to get sort of dive straight into the work. But I want to um, 
ask one person to share if you have an example of a school context or I'll share mine. And if anybody else wants to share an example of how this has happened in your school context. Um, for me, at the school I was working at, you know, we thought, oh, great, let's just eliminate plastic. And we went to the school sort of canteen, cafeteria, and they were on board. Let's just eliminate plastic bottles, right? Don't sell plastic bottles. And we didn't really go beyond that. So the good intentioned cafeteria leader eliminates plastic bottles. But what does she do? She brings in Tetra Pak and Tetra Pak is looks like cardboard but it's cardboard with metal on the inside. It's actually, com you, it's worse than plastic. You cannot recycle it. So now we had an entire school filled with Tetra Pak, even though everybody was trying to do the right thing, right? So that's an example from my context. Um, does one person have an example that they would wanna share that's brief from your own context of how you've seen sort of somebody intend to do something and and uh, have unintended consequences. Nicole, can I share? Please do. Um, well, we were trying to um, save on paper at uh, locally at my school, and we did it very well. But uh, we noticed that uh, our kids, uh, you know, a way of solving problems became very fixed to screens and computers. Uh, we didn't do as many manipulatives as always and worksheets, etc. Uh, we had to go back to, you know, some sort of uh, hybrid way because we thought we had overdone it. Yeah. It's a perfect example and we're not going to get it right, right? So it doesn't mean that because you become a systems thinking, you can figure it all out but it does support you to think a little deeper before you jump in. And it supports your students to do the same thing. So it's a perfect example, Milton, and thank you for sharing. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, think about sort of if we want, so my whole point of course, is if we want sustainable systems change, right? If we really wanna do it, we need to use some systems thinking. And today we're going to present the toolkit. And the, the toolkit is really important as educators and as academics where we want to make sure that there's strong foundations to the kinds of things that we're teaching. Um, we want you to understand that this toolkit was actually built out of the leading thinkers of sustainability and systems thinking. So Herman Daly won the Nobel Prize for understanding how sustainability was um, needed to be represented in the world. And the toolkit is built from the work of, of Herman Daly, of Danella Meadows, of Alan Atkinson. Um, so what we're bringing to you are tools that were designed for corporate use and United Nations use, but were then adapted with permission for education. And so they're really exciting. And I'm very excited that Gitanjali is here to share with us a little more about them. Thanks, Nicole. So we decided to share with you today one tool that we think is incredibly powerful, powerful and flexible that we hope you can use tomorrow or next week or next month. And it's called the Sustainability Compass. So just quick check in, give me a thumbs up or raise your hands on your video if you've ever used a compass before. For finding your direction, for knowing where you are. Okay, I'm seeing some hands and some, some emojis. Yes, so the Compass is a really accessible tool for students, for adults, and it gives us a framework for thinking about sustainability. So Nicole, if you can go on, let's take a look at this Compass. Like Nicole said, it comes from this robust theory based in Herman Daly's triangle. The essential thing to know here is the triangle's thinking about what do we need for sustainable development? How do we consider the triple bottom line, different kinds of human and natural systems? Where does well-being fit into this? It was thinking about all of these things, but in the 1990s, a man named Alan Atkinson was participating in the Balaton Group, so a big sustainability think tank in the 90s. And he and his mentor, Danella Meadows, were looking at this and Alan realized, wait, we don't want a hierarchy in terms of how we approach sustainable development, well-being and nature they're systemically connected. We need to flatten this pyramid. And that's where this compass idea came from. In order to create a sustainable world, 
we need to think systemically about our human systems and our natural systems and how they work together. So that's what we're gonna practice on the call today. And I'm gonna tell you just a little bit more about these compass points before we dive into an activity. These points together create a systems thinking tool that helps us think holistically about any topic or issue or item so that we can not only understand it really well, but make decisions and plans that think about creating sustainable outcomes. So going on to the next slide, from a nature perspective, that means we're looking at topics and issues, thinking about how do we live within the Earth's natural limits? We might think about the environmental awareness related to a topic or an item, things like pollution, climate change, biodiversity. A lot of these words and ideas that we really think of for green or environmental education or outdoor education, nature is where everything comes from. It's essential and related to everything. So we're always thinking about that. But how does it connect with our human systems? Which honestly, sustainability is about how do we as humans continue? Nature will be okay. So how do I keep these human systems in the picture? Going on, we want to consider economic systems. How do we build a sustainable world with a vital economy that's equitable and inclusive? How do we consider things like jobs and wages, investments, production and consumption, reputation and image, branding, innovation? We have to think about our economic systems and how they impact sustainability. We also have to think about our societal systems. So how do we create a more inclusive and sustainable world that is stable? It has governance and education that we're thinking about. We think about social cohesion and diversity, equality and social norms. We have to think about our society to determine sustainable outcomes. But it's not just about the collective, it's also about the individual because it's possible to do what's good for society without thinking about every individual and people can be left behind. We want to think about individual well-being, health, happiness, opportunities for personal fulfillment and development, quality of life, many factors. So these four points, these sustainability compass points, help us think holistically about an issue. And for the sake of time, I think we're going to skip this, Nicole, and go straight into talking about the SDGs a little bit more, because if you're on this call, you probably already are quite familiar with the SDGs. What we're going to do is give you a chance to ask some questions about the compass as we look at the 17 United Nations Development Goals in breakout rooms with one of us, one of the facilitators. And we're gonna ask you to think about the SDGs and which compass point they best fit into and maybe how they're interconnected. So in a moment, you're gonna get an invite for one of three breakout rooms. Breakout room one will be with Nicole and you're gonna go to the first board in the jam board that Nicole is gonna manage. Then breakout room two, you're gonna be with me. And breakout room three, you're gonna be with Karen. You're gonna have five minutes to talk about the SDGs and the sustainability compass. And then we're gonna come back together and dive into another activity on this. If you have any questions, just ask the facilitator in your room. And Amanda, if you don't mind, I would appreciate your help in helping people get into breakout rooms if they have some issues. So here are your invitations and we'll see you in those rooms and back here in about five minutes. And I just added the Jamboard in the chat. Thank you, Karen. Welcome back. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm hoping you enjoyed your very fast breakout room conversations. As we come back together, I'm going to ask you to mute for a few minutes before we go into our next activity so that we can share a little bit more information with you and then spend a bit more time in breakout rooms next time. Um, Nicole, would you mind screen sharing again for a couple of minutes to debrief and set the scene? Sure, love to. Thank you. Oh, we got to peek at your jam board. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, OK, <laughs> so we started, you know, we started to, to talk about it. And, and one of the things that we saw was, you know, this conversation about, well, can we just put everything in the middle? Right. It's all integrated. And one was the partnerships. The other was quality education. And, you know, speaking to our educator hearts, education should go in the middle, of course. Um, but we, we just began. Um, to have sort of some conversations about what that looks like. And, and then one of our team members started to look at the ways that things are connected and they still are doing that right now, which is <laughs> quite lovely. Okay. That's great. It's so funny you mentioned putting everything in the middle because um, just quickly in our group, we, we started with everything sorted out on the sides. And then by the end of the call, someone had moved everything to the middle. <laughs> it was just, it was so hard to think about them just from one lens. And, and that's kind of the point, right? 
these SDGs, we know, were created to try and think more systemically and sustainably about issues. We know that you can't just work on the ocean and life below water without thinking about how it's connected to all of these other issues. It might be your passion and where you spend your most energy, have your most expertise. It might be where you focus your work. But if you forget how all of these SDGs are interconnected, you're more likely to have those unintended consequences, like the firefighters throwing that woman into another building because they weren't thinking about the connections. That's what we're trying to remember. With the SDGs, we want to do more good than harm. We want to remember the systemic connections, and they're all interconnected. Uh, you can organize these any way you'd like. This visual is how our team has chosen to organize the SDGs by Compass Point. And we chose to put 17 in the middle because we see it as really collaborative. But like we were talking about in at least my group, but I imagine all of the groups, these can be organized many ways. And actually looking at the next slide, something that we know a lot of teachers do, and I think it sounds like the conversations went in this direction, um, is think about an SDG systemically. So if we wanna understand quality education, how can we help our students or ourselves think about the causes and effects of this and how they're interconnected. You can put any topic in the middle of a compass like SDG4, quality education, and think about it in terms of how is it related to each of these compass points, to nature, economy, society, and well-being. So this is just a quick visual from a couple of teachers who did this with their students, I believe last year for the International Day of Education. And then going forward, Nicole started to show you that we're going to be thinking more about this compass with a bit more time this time to explore a different topic or a question and show you how you can think systemically about anything using this tool to guide you, whether it's like Karen with her early year students or Nicole thinking about whole school sustainability or me in a secondary context or anything else, you can put anything in the middle and use this to think about sustainable outcomes, systemically about where things come from and where they go, et cetera. So what we're going to be doing is going into breakout rooms again and we're gonna let you choose your own breakout room this time. We are going to have three different breakout rooms where you are going to either get to explore with Nicole in breakout room one, thinking about what is a sustainable school? What does a sustainable school have or do or look like? In breakout room two, I'm going to be looking at with people thinking about empowering youth. So thinking about what is involved in making students feel empowered to act for sustainability. And in breakout room three, Karen is actually gonna be looking at a picture and she's gonna be working with people to think about how we can use the compass to look at visual or some sort of prompt with students to really think deeply about it. So in a moment, you're gonna get your invitation for joining one of these three breakout rooms and I'm just going to quickly write our names on the titles of them so that you can join one of these. So like I said, Nicole is what is a sustainable school. For me, it's about thinking of what empowers students to act for sustainability. And for Karen, it's going to be a photo. All you have to do to join a breakout room is select the breakout room in a moment when you're given a little pop-up window that says, pick your own breakout room. We're going to spend about 20 minutes in these breakout rooms, but I'll send through a notice to you if that time changes at all and have a nice conversation about how to use the compass. Again, if you have any issues of tech, please stay in the main room and perhaps Amanda can help or ask any of your facilitators questions in the rooms. So here's your invitation to open your rooms. Join whichever room you'd like by clicking on the breakout Hello. invitation. Sorry, Miss, and uh, there are uh, those who are joining these meetings. Mm -hmm. I'm Ahmad Nazar from uh, Afghanistan. So I ha have a question and as well, I uh, need uh, your uh, help and your suggestion about the girls who are in living in Afghanistan, but they cannot go to East school. What mm. is uh, your suggestion for them, how they can continue their schools and how can the, the this uh, uh, staff meetings help them especially as because i am a director of uh, private school here so yeah. i need uh, your helping and i need uh, uh, your idea about this problem big problem we are 
facing in that's Afghanistan. Such a big problem, and in, in, like I would love to talk to you a bit more towards the end of the call after this activity. Perhaps we can give you my information, and we can follow up via email. Right now, we're going to dive into breakout rooms to talk a bit more generally, but please do reach out afterwards in the chat, and we'll share contact info to learn more and have a connection. Okay, okay, Miss. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So Bye. I'm going. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's Amanda. I don't know if you can see my picture, but I will assign you because there's quite a few people that um, didn't get the choice to uh, join. So it will be a surprise since I have to just go through and assign you which room you're in. So apologies for that. Mm -hmm. That's OK. So when you see the um, invitation come up, uh, please click to join. Okay. 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 Okay, everyone. Hi, everyone. As we're coming back in. Um, so once again, just a quick reminder, now that we're in the main room, if you could mute while you're not sharing. However, I think we, we do hope to hear from a few of you now and have some of you unmute. So that was still quite a quick time period to be thinking about an issue. These are big issues, but hopefully you prompted some interesting conversation using the compass in this short time. I am gonna ask each group to have a volunteer share something from their experience, maybe an interesting thought that came up, maybe a connection that you made between compass points or ideas you brainstormed, or maybe even you found like a causal loop of ideas that were connected to each other. So let's start with Nicole's room. Nicole, anyone in breakout room one, is there a volunteer to share a little bit with us about your compass, about what a sustainable school is or does? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Marad, you're on. Uh, so in our group, so we talked about a different uh, perspective. So for example, we start from how can scholarship can help us to to connect with other uh, area? For example, and if we find a, a scholarship, we can help students who they don't have enough uh, money to to continue their study and have this ability and this build their skills for preparing them for uh, the future job. Especially, uh, for example, in Africa, we, they don't have uh, enough uh, money for having access to technology. And also, if we can do that, we can prepare students for the future, for a bit, for changing their mindset, and they can be entrepreneur. In this case, we can resolve a mini problem. And also, we can say that we can resolve uh, 70 goals because the mindset of students will be differently. So we can, I mean, if we create a new generation of entrepreneurs, so we can resolve a lot of problem as poverty. So here we can talk about economics. Also, we can talk about society. And also, if we create new generation of entrepreneurs, they can find some solution in environment and climate change. Here we can go to a nature. And also, if we have this mindset of connecting with the nature, we can uh, have we can we can't have this uh, huge gap between high technology and the return to our life before and also we can have this uh, inner peace and also have this compassion and uh, resilience and also we can uh, prepare students for being problem solver because if they have this kind of inner peace and they can have they can be problem solver so they can resolve a lot of uh, problem and they don't they can't blame but they will resolve the problem and also if we can create them so they can create a job if we can they can create a job also they can they can for example they they can have uh, financial independence and they can't uh, blame our uh, parents or so also they can help our community and also even if we talk about students they can impact other students it's like a pyramid so also when we talk about scholarship it's not about just a student and also about uh, educator and also a lot of organization because if we share uh, ideas and knowledge with different perspective we can resolve even if we we can act globally but, but and think globally 
but we can act locally. Everyone can resolve problem in local uh, area. Amazing. Thank you. I think my favorite part about that was the and also and also and also <laughs> because yeah. your group clearly I, was. Just I, I am sorry because I am I am mathematics, so I have this perspective on mathematics, and also I start to 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 study about uh, compassion and also resilience and also literature. So I like to to Amazing. jump between different areas. That's exactly what we're hoping you'll think about, though, with this tool, right? It helps you brainstorm all these different pieces and how they're interconnected to maybe even pick out a leverage point, like a scholarship program that can really make a difference in how the community thinks about sustainability. So and way, what you told us before, thinking as a system thinking, not to just have one perspective, but we can think globally and have a lot of, and you can have a lot of input for finding a one uh, we can say in one prediction, and after that, we can resolve a lot of things. Thank you, Murad, for sharing from your group. I loved hearing that, and I'd actually like to ask Nicole, if you don't mind, keep screen sharing for us for the other groups. That would be great. Um, our group didn't pick a spokesperson yet, but we talked about so many connections. Someone from group two, would you like to share a couple of connections you found or a couple of ideas we talked about that stood out to you, thinking of how we can... Oh, actually, yeah, let's do my group first, just because I started. <laughs> um, so what are some things that impact how students feel empowered to engage in their communities? I'm going to leave a little bit of space for anyone from our group to share instead of sharing for you. But what do you think? Go ahead, Ma. Okay, thank you. So I, I heard so many great ideas in here. Um, one thing that I know I heard from several people was this idea of modeling things for youth and engaging in mentorship. So you can see mentorship down in the society piece. Several people shared stories about how they're trying to mentor students or things they're already doing for this. We talked about how what teachers do, it models actions for others. And so it helps them not only learn how to feel like they're supported from adults, but it teaches students about, you know, the importance of having student-led conferences, getting them resources to do that, helping them explore their values and sharing knowledge that let them be empowered to tackle issues and engage them in civic work. We also talked about um, the importance of storytelling. And so through mentorship, we can actually support students in sharing their stories and sharing stories about things like the climate issues they're seeing, which increases knowledge about things like green jobs. And if there's more people working in green jobs, then there's even more people who can mentor. So that story, thanks, Nicole, that sharing stories impacts seeing climate issues, which leads to more knowledge about green jobs, which can lead to even more mentorship. So lots of interesting ideas in this group. And Karen, I'm going to throw it over to your group to tell us a little bit about the photo you were looking at. Awesome. Uh, we didn't pick a spokesperson. Um, would anybody from our group please chime in? Uh, Sarita or Marcella or someone else, please? Yes, no problem. I can tell people what we did here. Well, first, uh, it's uh, absolutely essential, as um, the person before said, to understand why we need to take uh, or what we need to take to the classrooms when we talk about sustainable goal number four. Uh, quality education is just this, sustainability and understanding the connection so that students can take better action. So um, first we had a look at the picture and we started um, uh, connecting uh, the picture with uh, the different areas of the campus, nature, economy, society, well-being, and we um, placed our ideas um, in it and then we started interconnecting our ideas, because the interconnectedness of the SDGs cannot be denied. I mean, we all know that. Um, and at the same time, um, we started talking about different ideas that came to our mind, for example, on how to use this in our classrooms, um, the idea of uh, making students choose pictures, right, to connect with the different um, points of a campus. 
and uh, well, the idea of why we need uh, to make an, uh, students understand yes to uh, the, the the importance of this uh, interconnectedness, right? Um, the skills that our students need for the future are just these, okay? So um, we, we had a great time, yes, uh, trying to, to see that we are going to create uh, better uh, thinkers and better, uh, uh, let's say, future leaders if we uh, use this campus tool in the classrooms in this way. Thank you, Marcella. Yeah, thanks, was, Marcella. It, it, was, it, was a, it was a pleasure to have Karen as a leader, right? She gave us great ideas as well. <laughs> well, thank you to your group for sharing. And I think, you know, like I like I mentioned, this was a quick way to try using the compass to look at a picture, a challenge, an issue. And going on to our next slide, something that we mentioned is you should be able to use this tool in many ways. We think that it has many, many uses. We know teachers all over the world use it to bring nature and sustainability into all sorts of curriculum, regardless of age, regardless of subject. Sustainability and systems thinking doesn't have to be a science topic or a geography topic. You can use this compass to think about any issue with these systems conditions in mind. So it's one tool with many uses, whether it's in math, thinking about retirement and why that's important, civics, thinking about how to advocate for better types of fashion, addressing fast fashion issues, history, causes of war, or what life was like in the past, and designing, design technology. How do we create products that meet needs and do more good than harm? Very quickly, I want to share this, which is on our website for you to follow through if you want to learn more about how the, the compass works. There's a video you can use with your students. There's information available in Spanish. Uh, simplified and traditional Chinese and English at the moment on our website. I'm going to ask perhaps Karen, if you can send through, or Amanda, thank you, send through the link to our website. But for any topic, you can follow a path to sustainability. So pick your focus on a topic, add ideas, think systemically and make connections. And then like we were doing all together, have another look. What stands out to you? Can you find some loops? Can you find places to intervene? You can do this with any topic. And extremely in brief, because there's a billion examples on our website, I want to point out just a couple more examples of how this might be used in classrooms or in community work. So I'm going to go through these quite quickly. And again, these are all on our website under the lesson plans page. If you want to look at examples from teachers around the world, you can use this in young student with young students, not only like Karen has described, but with teachers like Anna Kaplan, who use it with her grade two, seven-year-old students to think about what's a sustainable community. Another example is thinking about using pictures, as Marcella mentioned, to think about an issue like Nicole did with her students to think about expressing values in digital media. You could also do this thinking about how students will run events. So Monica used it with her middle school students to think about how to run their science fair. You might even think about doing this in student debates or student leadership. So if you want students to think about an issue, like this issue Sesame was thinking about was homelessness and people experiencing homelessness, thinking about what's the role of government subsidies in that. So at a higher level, helping students think about where they might want to advocate or suggest solutions. And then there's other ways to use this too, like Owen used this with his sustainability committee in his school to figure out their goals for the year. How could they make the school more sustainable? And lastly, it doesn't have to just be in schools that are thinking about topics. You can use it to look at environmental justice issues like Alicia did with her students, thinking about how to get involved with, in this case, the contamina contamination of Lake Chapala. Or even outside of schools, thinking about the ways that tourism is sustainable or not sustainable. So there's many examples on our website. That was a quick look but this is a very flexible tool. We hope that you'll consider using some more. And I'm gonna hand it back to Nicole to help us reflect a bit more systemically on how this tool fits into our schools. Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna, we're gonna just jump in into what next, but ultimately what we understand is that if we're looking at school sustainability, it isn't just, uh, it isn't just what happens in the classroom, right? As a school, we are an entire community. And so um, we're gonna just take a minute 
to think about who are those other community members in your school and um, how do they contribute to sustainability? And we aren't going to jump into a Jamboard or do that, although we were, but we wanna sort of move through and make sure you have all the information here. But can somebody mention a, a somebody in your school community that isn't a teacher and what might be their role in sustainability? Um, can I go? Mm -hmm. Uh, religious leaders. Uh, this is a group of people that has been left out, but they can really influence the society to act upon sustainability, especially in terms of conservation, our climate change issues, addressing them on a personal level or individual levels within households. So I'll go with religious leaders. Religious leaders. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Sarita, you have your hand up. Can I answer? Yeah. Okay, so I could talk about a facility manager. Um, I mean, they look out for um, things that have to do with nature, the flowers, the trees. They remind the different clubs, departments to actually take care of these things. What are the flowers? See that the school environment has a warm ambience. Mm -hmm. Yep, so your facilities manager is really important. You're right. Yes, very, very. Jackie, you have your hand up. Okay, I'm also looking at the, the kitchen staff, the staff that uh, prepares the meals for the children. Mm -hmm. So if they have sustainability knowledge, and then they know, okay, this is how much we have to prepare. If there is any kind of wastage, how can we solve it? So that at the end of the day, we, um, they're giving children exactly what is needed. And then we're finding ways of handling the wastage of any remainders after the meals. Yeah, so they're contributing in the well-being level for the students, they're contributing in the nature level for, for figuring out what to do. And they're contributing in the economics level, right? Of, of making the best use of the resources on hand and, and ultimately then in, in the social space. Um, Kasim, can you share with us? I'm looking at uh, leaders of the Parent Teachers Association and even the parents themselves. You know, the children will be taught about uh, sustainability, about clim climate change and all those things. But yet, uh, the, when the parents add their voice, they see the weight uh, of what the teachers teach them in classroom and guide them. So yeah. their collaborations with uh, teachers and the school authorities will go a long way to help uh, the children take whatever is, is being taught or talked about seriously. Thank you, yeah. thank you. And I know we have more hands up, but we're gonna move on. Um, I think what everybody gets is schools or systems. And so we need to be thinking systemically about sustainability as our school, as a system, and recognize that people can contribute from exactly where they're standing. People can contribute in the job that they're doing. Your school nurse is contributing to sustainability on lots of levels, but including keeping kids safe or well, right? So understanding that everybody has a part of this conversation starts to, and, and sharing it in, in the space where we have a shared understanding and a shared language, people begin to understand what their role is and how they can contribute. And this is a way when we're talking about school sustainability to really scaffold your community to feel ownership in sustainable outcomes. So one of the things we're going to share with you after this, and there is a QR code if you want to take a quick picture, but we're going to share a link to a self-assessment. This you can use at your school, yourself, you can do it first to try to think through how is my school doing on this and where do I need to work in? So that's just a, a free download that you're going to be able to use and do, and we're excited for that. We want to invite you to join us. If you're interested about this, whether you're compass trained or not compass trained, we have groups around the world who are doing this work. And so feel free to go ahead and um, join a compass group and start to learn more and speak to people who are thinking deeply about doing this. If, Gitanji, do you wanna to speak to this opportunity real quick? Sure. Yeah. So if you're an educator in North America, including Canada, the United States and Mexico, 
we actually have this great opportunity for a free workshop series on systems thinking tools for climate education and civic action specifically. So it will include much more on the compass and another tool that any educator in the US, Canada or Mexico can apply to take part in. This is the QR code and the short link to take part and applications are due by the end of the month. We're very excited to have this be free to any pre-K through 12 teacher. It will be in English. And if this doesn't fit for you, then we have some other opportunities as well. Yeah, so you, um, if you, if this was fun, but you need a little time to digest, we're going to share the website and there's a free course that's just about the compass and it'll walk you through a little more methodically about, you know, the kinds of things we just did. And if you're in a position and you're thinking, no, we need to do this in our school, we have professional learning, we have certification courses online, there's lots of different ways to connect with this work, and we welcome you to do so. I think um, one of the things that's been critically important to this and we're really excited about is this work has been going for 10 to 12, year, 12 years with all volunteer educators. It was educators who were passionate, who wanted to share their work with others. And so they did. Um, and we're gonna encourage you to share what you've seen with others. You can jump right in. Um, and we really have looking at in line with the sustainable development goals that by 2030, a million educators are gonna have these tools in their hands. We're, um, we're recognized this year just six weeks ago by 100 as one of the organizations that could be the most scalable for doing this sort of innovative work. And it's really critical to us to lean into that space and to make sure that every educator in the world has the tools that they need. So we're gonna follow up with some information we're going to follow up with our emails. I want everybody here to understand and recognize that this network of educators is completely committed to building our capacity to build a sustainable world. And they're, um, they're good people. If you want more learning, we will find a way to get that for you and make that happen. So um, thank you for uh, the invitation, Amanda. And uh, the Global Schools Network. Thank you all for participating. Thank you, Gitanjali and Karen for co-facilitating here. We are um, really excited that we were able to be here with all of you. Thank you so much, Nicole and Compass Education, Gitanjali and Karen as well for this wonderful session. If you just stay on for one minute, we want to take a picture with everyone as usual. And then I'll make a quick announcement at the end of uh, the session here. So if you are able to, we would appreciate if you would turn on your cameras. Um, we'll take a quick picture of all of us today at this wonderful workshop. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. There are three lovely screens of everyone. So just give me one second. This is the first screen, one, two, three. Uh, the next screen, one, two, three. Yeah. And finally, the last one. Yeah. Okay, Bye. thank you so much for uh, being here with us today. If you could just yeah. see your microphones. Thank you. So once again, thank you to Compass Education. Um, it was really outstanding to meet you at COP and um, throughout the year. I think we have a very um, similar mission and we're excited to collaborate more with you and with your network of educators as we go forward into 2024. We will be sharing all of the information and links from um, Compass Education. And this will be sent out to the emails of all registered participants. We'll also send out the recording of this session. So within the next week, so by next week this time, you should have um, all of the information from Compass and you can follow up with them as well. Um, for all of you that are advocates and mentors, we're also going to be celebrating the Global Schools Advocates graduation ceremony next Saturday on the 17th at 12.30 p.m. Uh, GMT. So we hope to see you uh, there for our graduation celebration for our training program. Um, so without, uh, that, that's all my announcements for today. Any last words from uh, our Compass facilitators? Oh. We're just uh, oh, no. so oh, no. excited to see you all here. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. We look forward to just continuing to do the good work in the world. Mm -hmm.
Great, wonderful. Thank you everyone for spending some of your Saturday yeah. with us. Um, we will hopefully see you on our next professional development session. So thank you everyone. Please email us if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for educating.